folks, and welcome to the Daily Coin. My name is Rory, and today is today is Saturday, October the thirty first. It's Halloween, and I'm still at the New Orleans Investment uh, Conference, and I have the the distinct honor of speaking with Rich Checkin, who is the president and C C O O of Asset Strategies International. How are you doing today, Rich? Doing great, Rory. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm glad you're here, and the conference so far has been really great. And your company, you guys are a precious metals company. And if you would, uh, Rich, just tell us what, what you see happening with uh, gold and silver right now and what, what's happening with the market. Well, uh, plain and simple, we can see a lot of demand. Uh, we've, we've seen incredible demand for physical coins, bars, in every form available dating back about eight months now. Okay. So it's not just something that's a flash in the pan. Uh, I was at a Doug Casey's, uh, Casey Summit a few weeks ago, and he okay. asked me point blank, well, what's triggering all this demand? And I think it's you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand that the precious metals prices have fallen. You got <laughs> silver down 14 15 $16 range. Cost of production is 20 Right. Uh, the, so the savvy investors are seeing that as an opportunity, and they're trying to take advantage of it. Uh, gold down in the 1100s um, wasn't that long ago, four or five years, where it was trading, you know, at, at all time nominal highs of $1,900 an ounce. So demand is kicked in. We've been very busy supplying that demand, probably as busy as we've been since 2012. Really? Yeah. That's good. So. I mean, I, and there's some of the some of the dealers that I've spoken with. They've said that they're experiencing some of their some of their best sales months ever this year. And is that the, the case with uh, asset yeah. asset uh, asset strategies? No question about it. Uh, again, the physical demand is what's driving this. I don't think this is a fear trade. Um, I just think it's savvy investors stepping in because the the market uh, is allowing an opportunity. To an extent, and you you probably want to ask me about what the impact that's having on supply at some point. <laughs> yes, I do. So. Uh, if you would, uh, Rich, just tell us a little bit about uh, asset strategies and what you guys are doing. Well, we're we're a 33 year old Rockville, Maryland based company, uh, privately held. Uh, we started out as just metals and currencies, precious metals and foreign currencies. We have expanded over the past decade to be a full service tangible asset. Company. So we offer high-end rare coins, high-end rare stamps, world and ancients, and rare strategic metals. Very and, cool. And for us, it's very simple. The common thread in everything we sell is it's intrinsically valuable assets. So you take your dollars, which, by the way, are very strong right now, and there's an opportunity to exchange them for real things. Right. And eventually, over time, as our wonderful governments mismanage currencies and cause them to lose value, you can eventually trade those real things back in in the future for more worth less dollars right? there you go so. that's, that's that's that sounds perfect and what do you see what's happening with the uh, 90 percent silver because I, I like to use that as, a, as an indicator of what's happening with with the overall precious metals market and is the available is there any available are the premiums going through the roof are they stabilizing what's happening with the 90 percent yes to all of that uh, <laughs> you know you've, you've been around this industry a long time and you know that uh, investors tend to look to junk silver, and I agree with you, I don't like that term. It's, it's the colloquial term. It's 90% U.S. silver coinage minted prior to 65. Correct. Um, the uh, investors like it because it is real silver. Uh, it is liquid and recognizable. In case you had an emergency, you can easily uh, transfer that for the wealth that it stores. Exactly. Uh, and it's divisible. You know, and I, I personally don't think there's, you know, a gloom and doom scenario where we're going to be trading, you know, 90% uh, quarters for loaves of bread, but you never know. And it's nice to, to have that option. So it's been one of our favorite metals for years. Uh, our One of our co-founders believes that every family member should own a thousand face bag of junk silver. Of course, not every family member can in, right. in the world, but, uh, you know, it's a nice goal. Um, but, uh, you know, it's one of the things we like when the junk silver price or the 90% silver price is at or near bullion prices, bars and coins, because we like the fact that you can get that added divisibility without paying an added premium. Ah, uh, unfortunately, that's, that's not the case right now. 
Okay. Yeah, uh, you know, five is there, years. Is it not available? I mean, is there, or is it limited supplies, or what's what's going on with the supplies there? Very limited supplies because they're not making any more since '64. Right. Uh, so, you know, there's there's nobody that can just turn on the mint and start cranking out 90% silver. Although maybe we should reconsider <laughs> that. Um, but uh, so that the only time junk silver comes into the marketplace is through the secondary market. So people that already own it have a reason to sell it, whether it be an emergency or they hit an extreme low where they say forget it, we call that tired liquidation and they sell into the market, yeah. or it hits a new high, which we haven't done in a while. We've been range trading for, for a few years now. Yes. Uh, so another option is to hit a new high and now you've hit the point where they want to shed their junk silver over 90%. And we haven't had any of those instances for quite some time. So as range trading continues, the, the availability dries up, the premiums and the delivery times go sky high. Just to give you a quick example, five years ago, we were selling retail junk silver bags to clients, four to 5% over spot, all in, delivered. And if you paid me with a wire, I had it out the door that day or the next. Wow. Um, go back a couple weeks, We're these are the terms. 30 to 35% over spot for 90% silver. Uh, delivery times, can't tell you when I'm gonna send it to you. Wow. All I know is it's gonna be at least a couple months. And, and that's just a guess, right? That's just a guess. And uh, we have uh, folks that would tell us, I don't care. I want it anyway. Wow. That's, that's the demand we've seen for the past eight months. And you yeah. said you, you like all the, the quarters, dimes. And I, I personally, I like the uh, half dollars. Half dollars. I'm, yeah. I'm a half dollars guy. I've got, that was actually one of the very first uh, purchases that I made. My, for one of my first acquisitions, I should say, of silver was um, 50 half dollars nice. and it was uh, it was very I'm very happy with it I've still got them not ever gonna let go of them and they're all Franklin's every one of them are Franklin's and, yeah. well that, that's a good point you say you're never gonna let go of them I mean that's the way we look at precious metals we, we don't sell fear and greed we right. sell prudence, okay? There you go. And, and that's not a 50% position in precious metals, okay? What that <laughs> is, it's a, a small position, and, and we, we call it core holdings or your golden anchor or wealth insurance. It's basically a liquid store of purchasing power for a potential financial emergency you hope you never have. Yeah. And our thought is you never, you never part with it unless you have an emergency. If you do, cash it in immediately and meet the need, and if you never do, good for you. Yeah, Pass it exactly. on to your heirs, give them a start in life, give them some real money. Give them some real money. And, and the other part of it is, I mean, there's, there's so much talk, you know, not just here in the States, but around the world as far as moving to a cashless society. Mm -hmm. You have all of these, these currency wars that are going on. I mean, there's, there's so many different um, problems that we're experiencing with the fiat currency. And uh, once again, not just here in the States, it's, it's globally. And, and, you know, when you've got uh, our biggest creditor nation, China, unloading 12% of their U.S. holdings over the course of, you know, eight weeks, 10 weeks, that, that's, kind of a, that's kind of a big deal. It is. And we have to, like you said, be prudent about what we're doing as far as protecting ourselves, protecting our family. The only thing that has done that for 5,000 years, it's been, been silver and gold. And silver, I like, I personally like silver better because it has been money longer than gold. It's more accessible than gold. It's better understood than gold. And it's, and as uh, Brother John F. calls it, it's the people's money. It's what people use. It's, I, I agree with you. I like silver as well. I, I think, uh, you know, the, the only issue with silver in that regard is the bulk, and that's why yes. gold works pretty darn well, too, because you get a lot of wealth in, in a dense coin yes. or bar. Uh, and I agree with you about your comments about China. You know, I, I think it's brilliant what they're doing. Um, they're fighting a war, uh, they but are. I don't think they'll ever be a shot uh, because they're, they're winning it financially. 
yeah. and they're doing smart things. They're moving to real assets. And this is, this is not something that started yesterday or last year. We're talking three, four decades. We've seen a movement of real wealth, a transfer of real, real wealth, intrinsically valuable, precious metals, raw materials, the means wow. to produce them, uh, moving from west to east as the west continues their love affair with paper debt, paper markets. Yes. Um, and I think we're going down the wrong path. Uh, however, um, I don't think that's the end of the world. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't, I, and I agree with that yeah. wholeheartedly. I don't, I don't see. Uh, I, I used to believe that there was going to be this massive crash and everything was going to, you know, just crash and burn. I don't believe that anymore. I, I don't think that it's. In, I don't think that that's in anyone's best interest. No. As far and as they know it too, and they know it too. I mean, but and I think that that where we're at right now, and you can help me to understand this, Rich, is. I think that where we're at right now in this in time in history is are these governments trying to figure out how to get out of the dollar and what to move to next. And and they're not playing with each other, they're not communicating with each other regarding that. The East has its plans and what they're working on, and the West has its enslavement and what they're work. I'm sorry, their plans and what they're working on. <laughs> well, they don't consult me. Um, uh, they haven't called or I hadn't noticed. Uh, but uh, You didn't get the email? <laughs> no, I didn't get the email, but there, there have been a couple of theories kicked about. One is that they're not communicating and they're all kind of driving things down to zero uh, on their own. Uh, they're all looking out for their best interests sure. and they're running to the racing to the bottom. Uh, that's one theory. The other theory is they are talking to each other and basically, they're taking turns, bringing their currencies down. Uh, I, I forget who spoke the other day, but they talked about taking a little sip from the canteen as yes. they're fighting in the heat. Um, so that's the other concept is maybe they are in collusion um, and they are keeping a mind on global stability. And as a result, they're just weakening everything fiat as they, as they move further downward toward intrinsic value of fiat, which is zero. And, and how do you protect yourself as an individual investor? Uh, my personal opinion is you hold real things when fiat is strong. Dollars are strong right now. It's a great time to take advantage of that, whether you believe in metals or maybe it's real estate or maybe it's timber or maybe it's uh, high-end art, rare art, rare coins. Um, anything that's real and has value, it's a great time to move into it. And you become your own central banker. The hell with what the government does. Exactly. Be your own central banker. That is... Uh I like that a lot. As a matter of fact, I've, I've written about that and I've interviewed several people and we've discussed that very thing. And that's, that's in essence what you have to do. I mean, if you, if you put any, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, but if you, if you have any faith or confidence in Federal Reserve or the European Central Bank or any central bank anywhere on, the, in, on this planet or fiat currency, I think that you're you're making a mistake. Now, that's just my opinion. You can do whatever it is that you feel is best for you and your family, but history will prove me to be right. <laughs> if you go back and look at history, you will see that the statement that I just made is 100% correct. You know, I, they're, they're, I forget where I read it, so this is an un... Uh, backed up source, if you will, but uh, somewhere it was written that uh, no fiat currency is to the te test of a couple centuries, basically. Um, they, they all tend to go to zero by that point. And, you know, you look at our history as a country, uh, and uh, we're well past that point. And, well past. But I was corrected. Uh, one lady said, yeah, but we actually were gold-backed and convertible up to a certain point. So the 200 years of just straight fiat didn't start in 1776. No, it started actually uh, August 15th, 1971. Exactly. When uh, Nixon closed the gold window and, and, and gold and paper dollars were no longer convertible to gold. Absolutely. And, the, uh, and according to Mike Maloney, uh, the research that he's done, it's about 40 years yeah. that the lifespan of, a, of a fiat currency and we are well past that yes. at this point. So, of course, the, we've enjoyed the benefit of being the have. world's reserve currency, yes. and the world is working off dollars. But, and that's where I think the big change will come. Again, I don't think it's gloom and doom and cats and dogs living in the street. What I think is going to happen is our our um, our standard of living is going to change significantly, yes. uh, and it'll still be okay. I mean, other countries ruled the world, and, and I say rule—that's the wrong word. 
dictated, controlled, set policy, coerced people into doing things, whatever the case <laughs> might be. You know, you have Rome, Spain, England, you know, yes. whatever. They're still around. They didn't still go around. off the face of the earth, and you can have a nice life in, in Rome or Italy or Spain. Um, but they're not calling the shots anymore. Right. And that's what's going to change, and, and with it, standard living, I think, suffers for those that don't prepare, don't become their own central bankers. Don't become their own central bank. And before uh, we, before we started the show, uh, Rich, you were telling me about the uh, White House Council on Retirement, or White House Council on Aging. White House Council on Aging, yeah. Yes. And we don't have time to go into that right now, but I would like to follow up with you and dig into that because... Retirement, what these what these guys are doing, what you were describing, was sounded very very important, and it sounds like there's like kind of like one of the uh, uh, think tanks that, that makes policy in the background. And if, just give us yeah. a, a brief introduction to it. Yeah, maybe maybe I can come back in the future and touch it in a little more depth because uh, it's something that's not on everybody's radar, yes. but it ought to be, especially if you're at or approaching retirement age uh, because what they do is they meet every 10 years uh, and they just met this summer in coordination with anniversaries for uh, both Medicare and Social Security okay, okay. Uh, so they, they basically get together and they're kind of a think tank uh, and you have to pay attention because although they're not policy making and they don't build regulations uh, what they do is they talk about things that end up seeing the light of day. Last time they met, 10 years ago, they talked about, you know, extending the retirement age. Next thing you knew, you're going to work until 67. All right, so these are some of the things that come out of these meetings, and if you're not paying attention, you could get blindsided. And, you know, the two, two biggest killers of a fixed income portfolio are basically inflation and taxation. So you have to pay attention to, to threats from both directions, and there's a few coming out of this summer's meeting. You might want to get back and talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I think that uh, I would love for you to come back and, and if we could dig into that. I think that would be a great topic for, for, uh, for my audience. And I know that they would be very interested in that. I'm very interested in it, so uh, maybe in a few weeks we'll, we'll get back together on that. Be happy to do it. All right, thank you. And we've been speaking with uh, Rich Checkin, yep. who is President, COO, Asset Strategies International. you find a link in the description box. And Rich, it's been, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rory. It's been my pleasure. We'll talk with you soon.